Hi, I'm Tiffany and this is Towering TBR. So this is like my favorite video to film and it is my top favorites of 2022. Um, I narrowed it down to 12 and I can't narrow it down anymore. So uh, I'm going to tell you about 12 great books and most of these you've heard me talking about, but some were from before my channel, so there should be something for everyone. The, I guess at, we'll start at the bottom, the twelfth most favorite is uh, Days of Sand by Amy DeJong. This is a beautiful graphic novel about a newspaper man in the 1930s who is tasked with going out to the Dust Bowl and taking photographs for the newspaper. And at first when he gets there, it's very much a, just kind of a, these things need to get taken. Just there's a checklist of types of pictures. Um, but as he gets to know the people and the families, it's like really hard when they die or when they have to move away or if their farm is foreclosed on. And the art is beautiful. And I loved this story about this man who just fell in love with the community and wanted to help them. It's won some awards for the graphic novel, uh, and it, it definitely deserves them. It is my favorite. So, best graphic novel of the year for me, Days of Sand. And number 11 is What the Fireflies Knew by Kai Harris. This is a beautiful coming of age story about KB her father has just died, and her mother has dropped her and her older sister at the mother's estranged father's house, or an estranged grandfather for the kid. And we learn about how the dad died, we learned where the mom is now, um, and we learn about the estrangement of what caused this rift in this family so long ago. Um, unfortunately, this is this is a really hard book. KB is growing up in really hard circumstances, and but these characters are just so, they're so well done. They feel so real and authentic, and I can't believe this was a debut novel. I read this back in February, and it blew me away, and I'm excited to pick up whatever Kai Harris publishes next, so... If you like coming of age stories in the American South, this is a great one. My 10th favorite is Everything Sad is Untrue by Daniel Nayari. Um, this is his middle grade memoir. He tells his story from the perspective of when he's a kid and he grew up in Iran and the um, official uh, religion in Iran is um, Islam and they don't have any tolerance for people worshiping in other ways and so his mother who is practicing Christianity um, she gets threatened and they put a fatwa on her and she has to escape Iran and this is his account of leaving Iran in those difficult circumstances and then living in a refugee camp and then being sponsored by a uh, country and having to learn all of the the new things that come with living in a different country and the way he tells the story he really it seems like it goes off on tangents but then he has this beautiful way of just weaving this tapestry and he just says that's you know part of him being Persian is is he has to tell these like masterful stories and it was just amazing like I found it really well written I was really excited and interested there's quite a lot of um, humor at not knowing how to use like Western toilets and it's just it's a beautiful memoir and I'm so glad I read it the the ninth favorite book that I read this year is The Traveling Cat Chronicles by Hiro Arikawa. This is a beautiful 
road trip story, which doesn't usually work for me, but it did with this one. And it's this man who takes a journey throughout Japan trying to um, meet up with old friends or acquaintances to see if somebody will take his cat. And he keeps coming up with reasons, oh, why he couldn't give his cat to somebody. And it's obvious he doesn't want to give up his cat. And I think it's fairly obvious why he's having to give up his cat. Um, I don't think that's supposed to surprise you. It almost even could be feel predictable, but I didn't care. Like, I just loved this cat. He's snarky and sarcastic. And I just really grew to love him and his owner. And it made me ball. It was so good. So I definitely recommend it. Number eight is Red Shirts by John Scalzi. This was such a fun romp. It, uh, it makes fun of like a Star Trek type action science fiction show. And these characters keep having these things happen and they don't know why. And the journey to figure out what is going on is just funny. It's tongue in cheek. It's light and making like making light of stories like Star Trek. And to have Will Wheaton narrate it on top of it was just perfect. I loved it. It was so much fun and definitely an escapist book, which I needed this year. <laughs> Number seven is The Invisible Kingdom by Megan O'Rourke. This is her memoir of becoming chronically ill with Lyme's disease and working to find a diagnosis. This was incredibly personal to me because I am chronically ill. And while I don't have Lyme's disease, um, a lot of what she said really chimed with me. It really felt like she understood the pain and fatigue and, you know, other downsides that come with being ill a lot. And yeah, she has already been, I think, shortlisted for an award. It's, it's an amazing book, and if you are chronically ill or you love someone who's chronically ill, I think it would be a really good book to read. All right, number six is We Are Legion by Dennis E. Taylor. I read all four books in the uh, We Are Bob series, starting with We Are Legion, and this was such a fun sci-fi um, we start out with Bob on Earth. He gets to upload his consciousness, and his consciousness is awoken in a computer software program as the lab is being attacked, and he has to basically immediately get out and, uh, launch out into space. He's trying to find a habitable planet for humans to migrate to, and he's also having to deal with like interfactions that are fighting as well. And he clones himself and you might think a bunch of the same character wouldn't be interesting, but all of the clones are a little bit different from original Bob and they're funny and I grew to really love them even though they're not human. And it was just we have first contact with aliens, we have finding different planets, we have finding other sentient races. Like, it's just, I want to put the whole series in this spot. But the first one was so good that I immediately read within the next four months the other three, which is like crazy fast for me with series. So such a good series, and it's narrated by Ray Porter, who narrated Project Hail Mary, and I think that was a really good choice. Number five is Betty by Tiffany McDaniel. I have talked so much about this book. I don't think it'll be a surprise that it's on here. Um, but this is a beautiful coming-of-age story following Betty, a mixed-race child growing up in the 60s and 70s. 
She has an indigenous father and a Caucasian mother, and her mother is mentally ill. This book has so many trigger warnings, like seriously, look them up before you read the book. Um, the animal violence was almost enough to make me put the book down, but I'm glad I didn't because this is a story about a really resilient little girl who grows up in some really hard situations. She deals with racism, she deals with abuse, she deals with Uh, sexual assault and suicide attempts like there's so many trigger warnings but this book is beautifully written you really fall in love with the characters especially the father because he's always trying to tell like native stories to help her feel better about a situation and it's just so good so good I cannot wait for her next book fortunately I already have an arc book so good. Number four is Fingersmith by Sarah Waters. As soon as I finished Fingersmith, I made sure to go out and get all of the other five books she has published because she is amazing. When they describe Sarah Waters as lesbian Dickens, that is super apt. Her writing is very much like Dickens. It's very long and lyrical and detailed but I loved it. It is also set in a Victorian time period. We follow Nancy, a girl who's grown up with thieves and con men, and she's asked to participate in a con um, by this man called Gentleman. Gentleman basically wants to have a woman fall in love with him and be able to steal her fortune. She only gets this fortune if she gets married, and so he wants to have... Nancy be the lady's maid and kind of whisper in her ear like you, you like him and you you would be good together and I did say lesbian Dickens there starts to be feelings and then you feel like maybe you don't want to participate anymore and you don't know what to do next and there are so many twists and turns I had no idea what was coming but this was an amazingly executed book I love the writing, I love the characters, I love the plot, like, amazing. All of these have been five stars, but this was an immediate, I, like, as soon as I was done, this is five stars. I knew it. So, we are getting into my top three. The third one is The Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimara. And this is a story about Kokoro, a junior high aged girl who lives in Japan and she's being bullied and so she doesn't want to go to school. And her mirror shines and she's able to step through it and on the other side is this castle and six other kids around her age and each of them have a chance to get a wish fulfilled. There's a little girl in a wolf mask and she explains about the castle and she explains that if you find the key, you can make a wish. But once that wish is fulfilled, the castle will go away. And all of these kids are facing some sort of hardship and really want the castle as an escapist. And so they don't immediately start looking for the key. And they start to get to know each other as they spend time there um, to get away from their worlds. And it's, it's just, it's a sweet friendship story. And then there's a lot of plot at, in the last third of the book. And let's just say something threatens the castle and it's up to Kokoro to make some really hard decisions. And it is just such a beautiful story. I loved it so much. This is a book that does not have an audiobook. And if you're new, I have migraines and cannot always read with my eyes. And I usually need to have an audiobook. But this book was so good that I persevered and was able to finish it and absolutely loved it. 
definitely would recommend this to pretty much everybody. It very much has like Studio Ghibli vibes. It's very cozy and sweet. So loved that. My number two spot goes to 10 Steps to Nanette by Hannah Gadsby. Hannah Gadsby is an Australian author. <laughs> no, she, well, she is an Australian author, but she's an Australian comedian who had a Netflix special go um, uh, kind of shoot her to worldwide household name. And in her book, she talks about what her life is like. Um, she's queer and was born in Tasmania and it was illegal to be homosexual when she was growing up. And so she felt like she had to hide a lot of her parts and um, kind of hide herself away. She's also autistic, but didn't know that until she was older. And so she is now looking back at memories through that lens. And she's also dealing with mental health issues, which she goes into in the book. And I would say that this book is darkly humorous. Um, similar to her comedy, it is very tongue in cheek, but it also feels really quite intimate. Like you're, you're learning this really secret part of someone and she narrates the audiobook herself. So I love an accent. And uh, yeah, I listened to her narrate the book and it is just wonderful, so good. I thought this was going to be my number one book, but then a recent read has blown this out of the water. My number one spot goes to Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. Um, probably not a surprise to a lot of you who, re who have watched a lot of the videos, but absolutely loved it. I read David Copperfield uh, previously, and this is a David Copperfield retelling set in Appalachia 90s and 2000s around the time of the opioid crisis. And it's a coming of age story about a boy named Damon, who is nicknamed Demon. And he just, he has a really hard childhood and he has, uh, you know, abusive parents and then he's put in foster situations and yeah, this, this book already was great because it's a David Copperfield retelling and because the characters are so well realized. But I think what really made this a personal read for me is the opioid crisis started because there are so many people people dealing with chronic pain. And it's very clear in the book that she blames Purdue for a lot of their misrepresentation, misinformation about the warnings about Oxycontin. And the way she talks about pain and the characters who describe what it's like to have chronic pain really, really resonated for me. Like, I feel like this, this book was crafted for me. I love a David Copperfield retelling. I love hearing stories that make me feel heard and seen. And yeah, the, there's also humor in the book and there's so many memorable characters. And yeah, I, I feel like I can't hype it up enough. It's just, it's so great. Like no wonder it's already on the best selling list, but definitely would recommend that for you. If it sounds at all interesting. Tell me, what was the best book you read this year? And have you read any of these books? Or are you interested in reading any of them now that I've praised them so much? All right, let's have a chat down in the comments below. Thanks, bye.